Hello again, I'm John Hampshire and I specialise in helping endurance cyclists and runners prepare for challenging events, mostly ultra endurance events or long distance events. I've been coaching people for over 10 years. I coached Jenny Graham to break her around the world cycling record, where she was the fastest person to run around the world. And uh, Lyle Wilcox is just attempting to break that record at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see how she gets on. Claire and I provide one-to-one -one coaching services to people all over the world using internet-based tools to help them develop the resilience, the mental and physical fitness in a healthy and sustainable way that gets them through these very challenging goals. I post a weekly video every Tuesday now and uh, hopefully you'll like and subscribe so that you get a reminder to join in with me as uh, as I hopefully help you along your fitness journey. One of the hardest things in getting through one of these challenging goals, if it's the first one you've done, if you're not sure how to start, is just actually getting started or knowing where to start. So this video is about that. Don't click away if you're an experienced cyclist or runner because uh, these things are quite relevant to you. So it's just the same for everybody. Uh, there's nothing special about being a beginner. It's just that it's the first time you've done it. So you maybe uh, have a slightly steeper learning curve. One of the beauties of endurance sport is it's accessible to anyone. Anybody can take part. And in fact, in a lot of events, you're in the same race or the same event as the elite competitors or professional competitors. So you can compare yourselves against them, which isn't necessarily the, the nicest thing to do. It can be a bit humbling, but uh, everybody can take part. You can create your own challenges at a level that's challenging for you. And that might be to run five kilometers. If in the UK, it might be a park run or something like that, or, or even walk five kilometers, or it might be to ride your bike for 20 miles or 30 kilometers or something like that. So that's a challenging and endurance challenge. And these principles work in that way. Or it might be to do like Jenny Graham did to uh, break the record for cycling around the world, which you may know that Claire and I helped her prepare for that. And she wrote this really nice book and, and was kind enough to uh, to sign it for us. If you've been involved in sport, any type of sport, and particularly endurance sport, the challenges are pretty much as much mental as they are physical. It's a case of showing up consistently and putting the work in uh, to build your fitness gradually. It takes a long time to develop the fitness, to develop endurance fitness, and it also takes a long time to get faster, particularly once you've done that initial, you know, initially you you get faster quite quickly and you build your endurance quite quickly. But after a while, it's a case of putting the time in, training consistently, showing up and putting the work in. Having a goal to work towards makes a, a, a massive difference in, in life. You know, having life goals and objectives, humans like to have some sort of thing to work towards. And it's the same in endurance sports. So create some sort of goal, what, you, what you'd love to do. What would you really love to do? You know, what, what sort of challenge would you like to uh, take part in? This might change as you as you progress along your fitness journey. You might find that you, you don't actually like some aspects of uh, of that that goal that you initially thought would be the, you know the perfect the dream, and uh, you can revise it. So I mean you don't you don't have to stick with the same thing all along. It's not a failure if you don't make it. It's just part of the process of uh, of developing it as a person. And once you have that goal, then you can start to understand what it means in real terms in what you have to do to get fit enough and strong enough and resilient enough to do it. So how, how long is it likely to take? Is it a, uh, a few hours? Is it less than an hour? Is it going to be several days? Is it going to be several weeks? Is it going to be several months? How fast do you have to go to uh, meet the, um, you know, the daily requirement or to meet the time cutoffs that you've set for yourself? And how close to those things are you now? What can you do now? Once you start to establish these types of parameters, then you can start to build a training plan that moves you towards success. I find it's usually best to start with endurance and then you can start working on getting faster. Once you've got some sort of endurance base, it's much easier to work harder because you recover quicker. So you can work hard, recover, work hard, recover, and then you get better at working hard. Training is just a case of applying some sort of relevant stimulus recovering from it and then your body adapts to it and then you get better at that particular stimulus. So once you can run or ride for roughly the duration that's necessary, so if, if it, and if it's a multi-day event, then maybe say once you can do about six to eight hours, then you can start working on getting a bit faster and combine the speed work with the endurance work. When you're building endurance, you focus on going for a longer distance or a longer duration. And then when you're working on speed, you focus on maintaining your endurance and working on going a little bit faster. So it's all a balancing act, and always compromise. Um, and if you want to do strength work or combine it with other activities, like some of the clients I have out play golf, 
So uh, we have to juggle those sorts of things in as well. So we can adapt the training plan around other activities. Obviously, you can't do lots of other activities because you'd never be able to spend enough time developing the fitness and strength that you need. But a few other activities, life, life commitments, work, family matters, everybody's got other things going on. So we have to adapt things around it. But the emphasis... If you're building endurance, is on building endurance, going for longer. And the emphasis, if you're building speed, is going faster. I like to work with a fixed weekly routine. If you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know that uh, I like to have something similar on a similar day each week because I, think, I find that's a good way to learn, learn what's working, what's not working. Are you always tired on a Wednesday when you want to do your hardest session? If so, then do your hardest session on a different day. Or you need to do something easier in the run-up to that day so that you can work hard when you want to work hard or when you need to work hard. So this plan, this weekly plan, Monday rest days, I quite like to have Mondays and Fridays as easier days. Tuesday is also an easier day if you try in the endurance phase because if you've got a 9-5 to five Monday to Friday job, you tend to have more time at the weekends and therefore you can do more at the weekends and therefore you need to recover after the weekend. So Monday and Tuesday during the endurance phase, I make fairly easy. And then do something a bit harder on Wednesday. It might be something like six by three minutes really hard efforts with three minutes recovery. Because that stimulates your VO2 max. It has some intensity, but it is fairly easy to recover from it. Whereas the longer FTP type, thre threshold type sessions or sweet spot type sessions, they're quite grueling. And they can take longer to recover from. Therefore, the energy that you might be using to extend your longer training sessions isn't available because you've used it up in your, in your midweek interval training sessions. Thursdays like to do an endurance ride. So you ride for as long as you've got time for, or as long as you've got time and energy for. It's okay to do endurance training after you're a bit tired from your interval training, and then do it as much as you can over the weekend to build your endurance. So make one ride longer. Once you've got up to maybe four or five hour rides, you don't want to be going long every week. It's better to stick to the three to five hour duration most weekends, and then push the duration each maybe every other week or every third week so that you're giving yourself a big stimulus then you recover from it and then a big stimulus so i found that to be the most effective way of building endurance rather than just try to do something longer each week just do something longer now and again and recover and then do it again and then when you start to build speed then you would do a harder interval session on the wednesday you might do an endurance ride on the tuesday on the weekend you do some higher intensity work i like to do tempo work workouts at, at the weekends because they take a bit longer or an unstructured tempo workout which i call the tempo endurance ride where you just work harder on the climbs recover on downhills and ride at your endurance pace on the flats and that's a really good way to build up your average speed for uh, for longer longer endurance type events because it's more efficient to ride harder on the climbs recover on the downhills due to the way that the aerodynamics works and in support of this training plan the physical side it's important to have a good mental strategy so that you you you've got the mental energy to do the training because it it takes it out of you it's pretty hard to show up and consistently put the training in it takes um resolve and commitment and and you might not always have the motivation to do it so remember you focus on commitment create some sort of good routine good nutrition have a healthy diet that helps your mind have a healthy mental strategy a healthy work-life balance maybe include some sort of mindfulness type practice uh, some stretching and strength and conditioning if you have time for it or even just some gentle yoga create a good lifestyle and a good routine that supports the training. If you look at what professional athletes do, they don't necessarily train a lot more than amateur athletes, but they use the time that they have available when others of us have to go to work to uh, to have a good lifestyle that supports the training. So they can train that much harder, they recover a lot better because they've got they've got that time to to uh, recover and commit to being more healthy. It's really easy, actually. It's not there aren't any tricks. There's no magic. The hard bit is doing it consistently getting out and not if things get derailed a little bit just try pushing yourself gently nudging yourself back on track it's a bit similar to actually mindfulness where you you, you just might do mindfulness breathing and you then just nudge yourself back into focusing on your breathing when your mind wanders when your training wanders or you want to have a day off or you end up going out and having a few beers and then you don't you can't face training the next day it's okay to miss a day it's just don't miss a week because you've missed a day. Some people just get right off track 
if, if there's just one little hiccup. So the hard bit is doing the right things when things have gone a little bit wrong and consistently putting the work in a, in a progressive and sustainable way. And if you don't know where to start or you're struggling, just make a comment, create some sort of conversation and people will share their tips on how to get going and how they've dealt with things that have gone wrong. And I'm always monitoring the comments or you could email me or message me through the website. And actually, if you want to have a free consultation, just click the link in the description and I'll get, give you a free 20 minute chat about your goals, how to work to your goals and uh, see how maybe we can help you in a more formal way. Tell us what you need to work towards your fitness journey and, and we'll put that in future videos. And please like and subscribe so that you uh, get to know about them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.